so the assay is called uh, the uh, Westboro solution uh, to the problem of evil. I think we have the graphic of that. Um, I think it just says like, yeah, there we go. Uh, <laughs> so I see Andy made a graphic there of uh, a version of a Westboro Baptist Church uh, picnic with some philosophy themed signs uh, to be appropriate for the uh, philosophy substack. Uh, and I, I guess I don't know, like, look, uh, some of us are old and uh, we were paying attention to American politics in the Bush era when these people were sort of, um, uh, were sort of weirdly hard not to notice. Um, even though it's like a very tiny church, they were sort of, you know, maybe the most hated tiny church in the world. And to be clear, they, they certainly worked hard. You know, uh, they, they honestly earned that hatred, you know, by the sweat of their brows. Um, but uh, I, I feel like, you know, fortunately, uh, they, they do have a lower profile these days. But I don't know. Um, Andy, you're old like me. How would you, uh, uh, for, for some lucky kid who has no idea who these people are, uh, how would you describe them? Um the worst thing that's come out of the church since uh uh the inquisition yeah i mean what like i say in the essay that uh in some ways this is like sort of the most luridly awful christian denomination that you could imagine short of like human sacrifices in the church basement uh which for anybody who's ever seen the kevin smith movie red state is more or less kind of doing the one thing that they can do to make the with the westboro uh baptist church uh more horrible uh, but, um, you know, in the, so, you know, I, I wrote this essay cause I'd watched the most recent, uh, Natalie Wynn, uh, Contra points, uh, video, uh, which, uh, came out, I don't know, like a couple weeks ago, maybe. Uh, and, uh, in that video, she mentions this book called Unfollow by Megan Phelps Roper, uh, who, uh, grew up in this church and then sort of started to have her doubts and left and, you know. A lot of the videos about things that the sort of current post Westboro version of uh, Big Ed and Natalie Wynn disagree about, uh, all of which are interesting and important, but it's not really what I'm writing about because I, I was really mostly just fascinated by this book when I found out about it from Natalie's video and, uh, and read it uh, because, you know, the thing, um, you know, the thing about like in some ways i think the sort of story of somebody who's starting to like have their doubts about the faith that they're brought up in is a very familiar story and it's broad outlines uh but it's a very strange version of it due to the particular contours of uh this church so uh just as an example of this uh jake if we uh, if we have that last screen share i gave you uh this is something that uh, I, I, I found this online uh, while I was reading this book, uh, Unfollow, and um, it is just the strangest thing that I've ever seen. So the, you know, just to set this up, um, the, uh, the, the three people in the video, uh, the, um, like the, you know, brunette who's like off to the like left side of the screen, uh, is Megan Phelps Roper, the you know person who eventually left the church and wrote this book on follow. Uh, the woman in the middle is their mom, uh, Shirley Phelps Roper, um, who I think actually, I think this is really her Twitter account, actually responded on Twitter to me and was like, yeah, that's what we believe. Uh, you know, and, uh, and uh, was like, yep, good job. Uh, and uh, then um, in, uh, then uh, the um, the younger woman off to the right is uh, Becca Phelps Roper, uh, who's um, uh, who is uh, Megan's uh, younger sister, uh, and this is their their uh, Central Michigan University. I would love to know what the context of this is, uh, how they ended up here. Um, my, I want to believe that this was like a if this was like a class on cults. And they'd like studied them for the last week. And then they're like, oh yeah, why don't you come talk to the class? Uh, and um, they are singing uh, this adaptation that came up with of Lady Gaga's poker face to reflect uh, the Westboro theology. And I think that's all the setup I want to give to this. 
You want to strut like your unique, but baby, please. Monster lady, gay, gay, show your teeth. This is all me. I hate you. Big love substitution <laughs> is your game. You're just a fraud. But any halfway sees your hate for fans and for your god. Oh, 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 you pissed off God. You'll see what he's got. Oh, 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 you pissed off God. You'll see what he's got. You ain't God. You you ain't God, no, you ain't God, no poker face. You show your filth to everybody. You just got, you just got, yeah, you just got your boring face. Show your filth to everybody. No, 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 poker face, no, no, poker face. No, 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 poker face, no, no, poker face. You want to lie to them in hell, you all will be. A little fire is all fun when you're with me, God hates you. Pushing your head is what you're playing, silly clod. But every chamber's loaded when you're playing with your God. Oh, 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 you pissed off God. You'll see what he's got. Oh, 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 you pissed off God. You'll see what he's got. Nine eleven. You ain't God. You ain't God. No, you ain't God. No poker face. You show your filth to everybody. You just got. You just got. Yeah, you just got your foreign face. You show your filth to everybody. No, no, no poker face. No, no poker face. No, no, no poker face. No, no poker face. You can't tell them that you love them, you despise them, and you're bluffing, you got nothing. So you're lying, you're just hating on the truth game running. Just like a freak out playing dress up, so your costumes they can't help you out. God promises, promises, your destruction so marvelous. You ain't God, you ain't God, no, you ain't God, no poker face. You show your filth to everybody. You just got, you just got, yeah, you just got your porridge face. You show your filth to everybody. I want to thank good. you. I've spent the past decade trying to avoid that. And uh... yeah, um, <laughs> the well, look, I want to be fair here. Um, just call in balls and strikes. Uh, but every chamber is loaded when you're playing with your God is actually a pretty metal lyric. Um, you know, like I, I, just... I, thought, <laughs> I liked it. I mean, yeah, you know, you, was, you might not be in perfect agreement with the sentiments expressed, but yeah, no, they, well, they did it. What, yeah, what if what? Okay, imagine that was like a parody. That would <laughs> that would be that would be really good. <laughs> I saw somebody else in the, in the chat say they audibly gasped at that. You know, so if people remember about the one minute and thirty second mark, uh, they they've just sung the lyric, uh, "You piss off God, you see what you got," and uh, the mob interjects the sort of teacherly aside. 9-11. Uh, and uh, that's the sort of thing uh, for which they uh, became really notorious. Uh, that, you know, they started off mostly focusing on hating gay people, which is maybe not entirely unique for, you know, uh, 90s, early 2000s evangelical churches, but they sort of took it to a really luridly extreme and bizarre place. Um, and then... Um, but then, actually, I, th I remember I thought this was one of the funniest lines in the ContraPoints video. She was like, "Well, you know, they, um, you know, they, everybody kind of hated them because they were really down on both gay people and soldiers, the two genders of 2004." Uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, they they decided at a certain point that 9/11 was God's punishment for America's many sins, uh, adultery, homosexuality, etc. And then they sort of increasingly decided over the years that everything else that's bad that ever happens is God's punishment for, for something or other. Uh, so, for example, there was a mass shooting actually in my hometown in Michigan uh, that they have a press release I saw on their website uh, saying it was God's righteous punishment, for, you know, whatever America sins. They said the same thing about the uh, trade derailment in East Palestine, Ohio. Uh, they... Um, 
you know, uh, COVID-19, obviously, you know, as a blessed divine, you know, righteous divine punishment. Uh, and um, this is, uh, and, and what sort of becomes interesting to me at, at some point is that as a way of sort of processing the uh, problem of evil, you know, I guess like sort of colloquially, the why does, why do bad things happen to people question, uh, this is a very simple and kind of weirdly internally consistent answer to it. And it makes you think about how uh, much less obviously coherent some of the alternative answers are. So that that's more or less, uh, you know, and look, don't get me wrong, uh, intellectual consistency is a virtue, but it's not really in my top couple. I, I would prefer basic human decency if I had to choose between um, normal Christians who don't picket funerals and uh, internally consistent Westboro Christians. I would take, I'll take the less consistent ones any day of the week. Uh, but, uh, but I guess in a, in a perverse way, you got to give them a point or two for that. Yeah. I mean, and I, what about when like a member of the church, something bad happens to them, I guess just like an impure thought or something like that. That, 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 that would be my next question. What's yeah. The logic well, there? Uh, apparently Fred Phelps, who is the founder of the church, um, the uh, the guy who you know coined uh, their most characteristic slogan that I'm not going to um, you know God hates British slang term for cigarettes uh, the uh, that guy um, when he was dying uh, was apparently excommunicated from his own church and um, they haven't I think they never quite confirmed or denied that, that it happened um but uh they they sort of said well you know people's membership you know they kind of try to claim hip or something you know that's like uh you know we're not going to disclose you know uh, people's membership status um but the story at least that's told by several ex-members is that um that uh the dementia that he had at the end uh both caused him to sort of slip up a little bit and like maybe like soften um there was a point where he was speaking like there was some like uh there was some like lgbt kind of uh pro lgbt kind of organization that was like set up across from like where the church was that, that like he yelled over to them uh you know you're good people and uh that was like that, okay that's heresy you can't do that and um and but I, I think the suggestion is Megan makes in the book is that like just the fact that he had dementia at all was sort of you know taken as like a sign of God's disfavor. So uh, you know it's a it's a tough uh, tough road to uh, to hope. But uh, yeah, like I said, points for a, a sort of grotesque consistency. You have been watching free public content from Give Them an Argument. To access every single episode of the show, the main show on uh, Monday nights, all of the streams, all of the uh, debate breakdowns, all of the patron exclusive post games on Monday nights, all of the patron exclusive bonus episodes every week, and much, much more, go to patreon.com slash Ben Burgess. I cannot resist ending this with, don't be foolish. <laughs>